Hello everybody, I'm back. Now I wanted to make that quick tutorial. I was telling everybody I would go over the emulator, how it works, how to get saves, how to put your games on and get them to be recognized. Now I'm gonna go over all of that. Now, first and foremost, to get Game Boy Color running on your Nintendo Switch, you're going to have to download it, put some files where they need to be on your SD card using your computer. Yes, audio does work. And yes, saves are working. One thing you should keep in mind is save within the game. And then after you have saved within the game, if you push the X button, it will save a file of the game. Now when you do that, if you do switch games, you will have to back up that file or change the name. This way when you save with another game, it won't save over that game save file. It's inconvenient, but that's the way it is. Now, what you're gonna need to do first, and just so you know actually to go over one quick thing, controls for moving around, you're gonna have to use the D-pad. The D-pad is working. The joystick is not currently, and it will be. Um, you can use, you know, your A and B button, your X button is to save, and yes, there is audio. Now, you're going to want to go to this website here, and you're going to want to download this file here. It is the khedgb.nro zip. Download that file, and along with that file... I would say download two other files on this page. If you scroll down and go to page three, at the bottom or close to the bottom of page three, there are two other files. Now these are different versions of the emulator. Um, one of them is really small screen, one is medium, and the original on the first page you would have gone to, which will be a link in the description will have been for the full screen now the full screen runs the slowest and the smallest version runs the quickest as you'll see here but I'd say it's it's not too bad it's pretty playable it's worth playing I think it runs a lot better on 4.1.0 than it does on 5.0.2 less crashing a little more smooth I was able to play in dock mode I'm not doing that right now I have my PFBA emulator on top right now, running an old arcade game. Now, once you download those files that were needed, you'll want to have your micro SD card plugged into your computer. That's the one you'd be using on your Switch for all your homebrew. And while you are there, you will want to go to the root of your SD card, into your Switch folder, and within your Switch folder, you want to have three things. Now, if they're not placed in here right now, I'm going to place them in for myself. This is one of my other SD cards. I have many. Now, the files I downloaded, those three, you're going to want to put each one into a different folder of itself. Wherever you put all your homebrews for backup on your computer, I would say name them something different for each one. I did Game Boy Color, Game Boy Color 2 times size, and Game Boy Color 1. Now if I go into each one of them, they have each of, sorry for the phone call, but you're going to have to bear with it. Each one of these folders does have one of the files downloaded from the website. Each one is either the small version, medium sized, or the large version of the screen. Now what you want to do is take those files which are in the folders you would have created and you'll want to place them in the switch folder of your micro SD card. Now, what you'll have to keep in mind is that once those files are on your micro SD card, you're also going to need a ROMs folder. So again, I'm going to show you exactly where the ROMs folder needs to be placed. You go onto your SD card, the root of it. You go to the switch file, or folder I should say. And then within there, you want to create a ROMs folder. In this ROMs folder, you're going to drag and drop the game you want within. I had placed, if I'm not mistaken on this SD card, 
I had placed Pokemon yellow. Now I had copied it over, pasted it, and after pasting it, I had took the time to rename it to ROM. I'm going to delete the old file I had and show you exactly what I mean. You're going to want to name this file ROM. Now after you have taken the time to name it ROM, the emulator will recognize it within this folder. This should be the folder where your saves are located when you push triangle after saving within the game. Now after you have your one game, you can only put one, not multiple, only one. The emulator currently will only recognize one game named as ROM.GBC. And now, once you start the emulator on your Nintendo Switch, after putting your micro SD card back into your Switch RCM mode into Homebrew, you will then be able to go into your album. And within your album, you will find one of the versions that you would like. As you can see, I have three. I'll go into the first one to show you that there is a difference in the size. It seems like I may have loaded the wrong thing there. I do apologize. I will give that another try. And let's see what happens. It should load this right here. And as you can see, it is the small version of the game. The audio works for all versions, but the small version will run the smoothest, quickest, fastest frame rates. As you can see, it jumps right into the game a lot better. It will run a lot smoother, even the audio is a little quicker, and it's all around great. I can't complain, you know, progress is progress. If it's not worth it to you, then what are you here for, right? So if you enjoy this, then you're going to be happy about seeing this. You're going to get this running, play one of your old favorite games from Game Boy Color, and you'll be good to go. Now, as time progresses, there will be more emulators. This emulator could be updated, or there could be a replacement, something that may run better overall with the ability to have multiple ROMs, scroll through them within a ROM selection screen. The audio will probably and most possibly be a lot smoother. I just knocked down Pidgey, 15 experience. Cyndaquil's getting up there. He's going to level up soon. Maybe I'll fight a trainer if he'll come after me. It looks like he's not. But like I said, there's different versions on here that I have. That's why I said to place those three separate files into three separate folders. So when you load, you will be able to see and play whatever screen size you'd like within them. Now the save file will be recognized between all three which is nice because the save file does get saved within the same file which if I'm not mistaken is the ROMs folder now remember I'm gonna emphasize this again you can only have one game on your SD card within the ROMs folder that is located in the switch folder you have to name that game as ROM and the file extension obviously will be .gbc. That will allow this emulator to recognize the game itself. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with an error or a message saying that the game could not be found on the SD card. And there's not much you can do to get around that but changing the file name or making sure your folders are located where they're supposed to be. Now, I will keep you guys updated if anything changes. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification icon and all that good stuff. And hopefully soon enough, we'll have some news on maybe Super Nintendo, possibly GameCube down the road, um, PSP. There's, a, there's many possibilities. Some people wonder what this is really worth. Why don't I go buy a Raspberry Pi? It's only $20. Because it's not this portable unless you go and get a touchscreen for it too. Which is something I have. I have a Raspberry Pi and a touchscreen and all that good stuff. But it's not necessarily as feasible as this. So take care. Hit that notification icon. 
and tune to the channel for all the latest.